Hello. We are in a series called The Road to Redemption. Uh, we've reached message five, and interestingly, we are in Luke 5, when Jesus confronts a leper, and they have an encounter together. Um, but I want to go back, just before we launch into this story, I want to go back to Luke 4, where Jesus introduced himself and his purpose and plan to his hometown by reading from Isaiah 61. Luke 4 uh, 18 and 19 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and the regaining of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so Jesus went through all over Galilee, uh, the region of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and sickness among the people. And that is according to Matthew 4.23. Today I would like to tell you a story from Luke 5, and it's also found in Mark 1 and Matthew 8, about the kingdom that Jesus was bringing and how he was bringing it. I guess you could call me a man without a name or a man without a, without a hometown. I'm only known as the man who was healed of leprosy by Jesus. Luke, Matthew, and Mark all talk about me, but my name and hometown are never given. <laughs> you know, it used to bother me, uh, but I've learned so much about Jesus and so much about myself that I don't care if anyone ever remembers me as long as they remember Jesus. Perhaps in this way, I actually represent every man from every town, maybe even you. I have a question. How long has it been since you were touched? I'm not talking about a handshake or a slap or a punch. I'm talking about a hand on your shoulder or a hug or someone holding your hand just because. Until the day I met Jesus, it had been years since anyone had touched me. From the day my disease began to show itself, absolutely no one would come near me. In fact, it became my job to keep people away. Unclean! Unclean! was what we had to shout. In those days, uh, the term for leprosy covered more conditions than what you call leprosy today, Hansen's disease. In the generations before me, the Hebrew term generally referred to a number of different scaly skin diseases. During my time, uh, the Greek term was similar, referring to various major and minor skin diseases. But I wasn't dealing with a bad case of acne or sunburn. I was filled with leprosy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. But don't worry. I won't give you all the details. The main symptoms include light colored skin lesions that remain for weeks or months, patches of skin with decreased sensation such as touch, pain, and heat, muscle weakness, numbness in the hands, feet, legs, and arms, enlarged nerves, especially in the elbows and knees, stuffy nose and nosebleeds, the curling of the fingers and the thumb caused by paralysis of the small muscles in the hand, open sores on the bottom of the feet. Injuries and broken bones and burns can go unnoticed due to the numbing sensation, the numbing of that sensation caused by the nerve damage. Over time, fingers and toes can be lost due to repeated damage. Leprosy can destroy the nerves responsible for blinking, which I do a lot. <laughs> this can lead to the eyes becoming dried out and prone to infection, potentially resulting in ulceration and blindness. You might imagine that I was someone that people didn't want to touch or even see. Dressed in rags, my feet wrapped and one hand covered, and every part of my face had begun to shrink. But that's... That's all I'll say for now. The idea that leprosy can be cured today 
with a combination of antibiotics is unbelievable. In my day, to receive a diagnosis of leprosy was a death sentence, and, and not instant death, uh, a long, agonizing death. So to be clear, I only had one chance for life, one chance to be healed, and that was Jesus. Some have tried to make something of my faith. I simply knew that I was a dead man walking and that I needed to connect with Jesus. Somehow get close enough to ask the question. Fortunately for me, my sickness worked in my favor the day that he came to town. I just got in the way and for some strange reason the crowd parted. All of a sudden, there he was. When I saw him, I fell to my knees, but don't worry, I couldn't feel anything. I bowed my face to the ground. I was basically a professional beggar by this time, but all I could think of to say was, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hmm. There was nothing like being a helpless outcast to take you down to zero and make you realize that you have nothing to offer. That it is because of the grace and willingness of God if there's going to be anything good that will come. Some have wondered why I said, make me clean instead of heal me. At that time, anyone with a skin uh, discoloration had to go through this long and humbling process whereby he or she would be pronounced unclean by a priest if the spots or spots seem to be spreading on the skin. The effects of that pronouncement emotionally and mentally were almost as devastating as the disease itself. Leprosy makes you physically numb, but the pain of separation and loneliness is unbearable. The thing I wanted to hear most in the world was you are clean. To my great delight, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched me. He touched me and he said, I'm willing, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left me. I don't know where it went, but it was gone from me. How do I know? Well, I could see no evidence on my, on my skin anymore. I could, I could feel. All my nerves were alive and it just wasn't just a matter of feeling all my physical pain and brokenness. Uh, he restored my body to wholeness. All that I had lost in the bone and cartilage and ligaments and nerves and skin of my body, he restored. It was life changing, life saving. I wanted to go and tell everyone the great news. Look, 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 I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm healed. But Jesus said, no, don't tell anyone. What? He said, go show yourself to the priest and bring the offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Well, that didn't make any sense to me in the moment. Luke didn't say it, but Mark wrote it in his story about my story. I'm embarrassed to say now, but I, I didn't obey Jesus that day. <laughs> I went around telling everybody. And of course, Jesus got so popular that he couldn't go into towns anymore. The crowds were too big. But now I think I know what he meant that day. Because another day, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. He wanted me to be a part of fulfilling the law with him. The right way to have done it was to go and show myself to the priest and take an offering so he could declare me officially and ceremonially clean according to the law. And it wasn't even just about doing this ceremony. Jesus wanted me to be a special witness to the priests. The other thing I know now is this. Jesus was trying to slow down his popularity growth and not speed it up. To slow down the release of the kingdom. 
He wasn't just thinking about one day. He was thinking about his total time working here on this earth. He often told demons to be quiet and not reveal who he was. He told other people the same as me. Don't tell anyone about the miracle that happened here. We're all so drawn to, to supernatural, huge stories, but he wasn't here just to be a miracle worker. He had so much more to offer. This is exactly why sometimes he would disappear for hours. He would go and find a quiet place somewhere and spend time with his father praying. The whole point for him was to live a life of perfect obedience to his father and then offer his life so that everyone, every one of us, could be declared clean. Have you ever thought about how sin is like leprosy? It is in so many ways. And the, the huge problem is that all of us are born into sin. We're, we're filled with it, just like I was filled with leprosy. And it causes complete separation from God and from each other. When Jesus touched me that day, it's like he took my leprosy on himself, except that his skin stayed clear. When Jesus voluntarily died for us, he took all of our sins on himself. But since he was the perfect God-man, our sins didn't stick to him. He didn't stay dead because of our sin. Instead, God raised him from the dead to show his great power over sin and Satan. All he wants is that we humbly come to him and ask to be made clean. He is willing and able to do it. Have you ever done that? You could do it right now. In my story, Jesus touched me and declared me clean, and then I was supposed to go through a number of other steps to be considered officially and ceremonially clean by society. But for us now, with regard to our sin, he has done it all. He himself is the cleansing sacrifice. He himself is the priest. He is the healer. We simply believe that it is totally true. Turn away from our sin and turn toward him and receive his forgiveness. If you've never done that before, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for those who may be uh, listening today who have never turned away from their sin and turned toward you to receive the healing, the cleansing, the forgiveness that you offer. And I pray that right now, in this moment, they will do that. They will turn to you and just submit everything to you and say thank you. Thank you for this amazing gift in Jesus' name. Maybe you're listening to this or watching this and you've already trusted him to take away your sin. We truly become new creations when that happens. The old is gone, the new has come. But sometimes people don't live in full obedience to the healer. Remember, I was clean, but not fully obedient to his command to me. Some people surrender their whole lives to Jesus from his very first touch on, on them. They still sin occasionally, but the daily pattern of their lives is just surrender to God. Others want to be forgiven, but they also want to keep being in charge of their own lives. So they live with this, this constant tension and continual defeat in their lives. It's because they're filled with themselves. What about you? Who is in charge of your life? Who decides your direction? Is Jesus just your savior, just your healer? His call, his claim, is to be the king of you and the Lord of you. 
surrender to such a compassionate, beautiful master. Let me pray. Father, I pray for those who are listening right now and watching, who are living in a tension and in a battle because yes, they've come to you as, as savior and healer and you have done that. And yet there's a fight going on. There hasn't been a complete surrender of their will to you and a recognition that in and of ourselves, we're nothing. And uh, we declare ourselves dead to our, ourselves and our own desires and our own old ways of responding to things, dead to sin, dead to ourselves and Satan and to the world, but alive to you and responsive to you. Father, I pray right now for those who might be struggling and battling right now. I just pray for a victory. And the way to get to this victory is surrender. <laughs> Such a beautiful and amazing paradox. But I pray for surrender to bring about a life of victory and joy and power in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.